So these days, many people are upgrading the carrying capacity of their vehicles, that's a GVM or gross vehicle mass upgrade, and now you can actually upgrade the towing capacity of your vehicle, which is a GCM or gross combination mass upgrade. The legislation has been released out in Queensland, and even if you don't live in that state, it's important to understand it because it will get rolled out to other states in the future. Now, in this video, I'm going to take a brief look at that legislation and explain what it is, how it works, and what it might mean for you. So, what can actually be upgraded? Well, separate chassis vehicles with a GVM of less than 4,500 kilograms. So that would be vehicles such as all the utes, it would be uh, ute-based vehicles, wagons such as the Everest and the Toyota Fortuna, etc. It would be other vehicles like the um, Toyota Prado, the Y62 um, Patrol, etc. Now some vehicles um, would be monocoque and that would be typically be SUVs, you wouldn't want to GVM upgrade them anyway. There are one or two vehicles which are probably questionable exactly whether this truly separate chassis or not but I think it will apply to most, um, most four-wheel drives. Now what can actually be upgraded? Well um, we, there'll be the GVM which is the gross vehicle mass, how much the vehicle can weigh, that's how much it can the reason you want to do that is to increase the carrying capacity of it. The BTC, which in this case stands for brake towing capacity, which might be three tonnes, that might go up to three and a half tonnes. And the GCM, gross combination mass, which is how much the combination of tow car and trailer can weigh together. Now, the GVM um, legislation has been amended. Obviously, you can still, you've been able to do GVM upgrades for a while, that's just been changed a bit. But the GCM up, um, legislation, that is new. Now, one point about all of this stuff is that it is complicated. Let nobody tell you anything different. There's a zillion different weights. There's GVM, GCM, there's eight different weights to um, comply with if you want to tow, for example. Now, if you want to know what they all are and explanations, head over to my website. I put the link in the description. I've got a towing calculator. You can put the numbers in and there are explanations of all the weights plus videos. Now, there's also four types of GVM upgrade. I'm not going to go through them now because I've got another video on that and I've got another one where I explain whether or not a GVM upgrade will actually help um, you tow more and the answer to that is it depends on your circumstances. So saying here this is complicated. Now I'm going to get into the detail of the legislation changes starting with the GVM one. There's now four types of GVM re-rating. You can go to 110% of um, the original GVM rating. So as an example of a Ranger, uh, original Ranger 3200 kilogram GVM that would go to 3500 which is 30% more payload or 320 kilograms that's actually quite a lot. You can do a GVM based on an SSM, which is second stage manufacturer um, vehicle, which could potentially be more, more than 110%. You can add an additional axle and increase the GVM that way. Or you could find an OEM variant. And what that means is you've got a vehicle with GVM of X. There's another identical vehicle maybe sold somewhere else, which is identically the same, but it's got a greater GVM. You could just say, well, I'm just going to rewrite this version to that version and it will be the same. Now, I need to do a bit more digging into this one. I really want to focus on the GCM one because um, that's new, but just letting you know that the GVM um, legislation has been amended. All right, so let's look at the GCM now, which is really the important one, because that's the new one. So we're going to take a tow cart, we're going to take a trailer, and we're going to give it, um, for the sake of argument, a 3,000 kilogram GVM, three and a half ton brake towing capacity, and 6,000 kilogram GCM. So the first um, path is we're going to leave the GVM the same. We're going to upgrade the brake towing capacity in GCM, and that looks like this. So that remains the same, brake towing capacity up. And numbers wide, it might look, something like this. We leave the GVM as it is, we upgrade, upgrade the um, brake towing capacity to 4,000 kilograms and the GCM up by 200 to 6,200 as an example. We then might also upgrade the GVM but leave the brake towing capacity the same and you might want to do that when you've got a heavy, heavily modified four-wheel drive. You need extra, towing, uh, extra payload for all those accessories so you do that but you've got a relatively light trailer and in this case we increase the GVM a bit, we leave the brake towing capacity the same and the GCM goes up a little bit. And the third combination is that you increase all of the weights um, like so. And those are just rough examples there. Now one caution, um, I wouldn't want to be doing this because typically OEM machines out of the box 
probably can't really tow their maximum safely to any, any degree. So increasing that without also increasing the GVM and making that tow vehicle heavier um, would not be a great idea. The heavier the tow vehicle is, the less able the trailer is to boss it around and the more stable the tow will be. And I've demonstrated that in another video with a model. You, you can look at that. Now, um, to their credit, the Queensland legislation does say that the BTC capacity, the brake tank capacity, should not exceed the GVM rating. However, it is at the AP's um, approving engineer's um, discretion and, and uh, certification. All right, so pass to the GCM re-rating. So you could just match another OEM GCM. If there's an identical vehicle with a higher GCM, you could just say we're just going to copy that if it's mechanically identical or you can create a design package and out for that the engineers have to get together and go okay how are we going to modify this car for the new ratings and for that you've got to have a clear scope which vehicles it applies to exactly the make the model the transmission the year whatever the case may be you've got to inspect in service vehicles to look at um, uh, how they're getting on and what changes might be needed for them you've got to provide a whole bunch of evidence about calculations on chassis strength etc testing all sorts of things then you've got to give clear work instructions so someone can carry it out and then you've got to have a checklist at the end there's a bit bit more to it than that but um you should be starting to get the, pack, the, the idea now that this is actually a complicated exercise to do these sorts of upgrades and so it should be now some of the things which might be modified in these vehicles would be obviously the brakes are very important if you've got more mass then you need to be able to slow that down effectively the chassis might need some form of um, reinforcement the axles uh, might need upgrading as might the suspension both um, springs and shock absorbers or dampers um, the tires and the rims might need to be upgraded so they handle a heavier load the engine itself might need modification probably not more power because gee, these days engines are powerful fair enough but cooling is often a problem and that's the limitation there um, the engine might start to overheat so you might need additional cooling um, and even the engine mounts if the engine is having to produce more torque then that's going to be from often that's um, going to have an effect on the engine mounts um, and even the tail shaft um, if the engine mount as the engine's upgraded then that's more stress on the tail shaft so that is some of the things which go into the modifications and uh, the summary is from the legislation must be able to safely operate at the re-rated GCM all affected components da, 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 um, must be must be good all right now we come to the really interesting part which is how do you know it can actually tow at that increased rating well there is a great uh, standard called SAE Society of Automotive Engineers J2807 and that has pretty stringent and comprehensive tests for vehicles up to 6350 kilograms and why is it 6350 because it's coming from America where they just had um, it in pounds and I've just converted it um, GVM and um, that's been around um, for a while since um, about 2013 it's been updated um, fairly recently and I've bought the latest copy of it and I've read it and I'm going to summarize it here so you don't have to buy it all right so this the performance standard starts with the tow vehicle trailer weight um, and basically it's saying okay what configuration should the tow car be in when you're going to do this testing and it's pretty good it says look as per emissions testing and there's you know um, some requirements around that but in addition to that we're going to say plus whatever trailer packaging is needed so you need a tow bar add that you need a tow tongue whatever the case may be whatever you'd normally use to tow that has to go in then um, we have two occupants and so i was going great two occupants that, that's realistic but then i looked at this 68 kilogram occupants I mean, are these children driving this, this thing? This, this makes no sense to me. I think it's, it's, it's crazy, but I checked it and did I get the conversion wrong? No, two 68 kilogram occupants, it's nuts. Anyway, um, but at least there's occupants plus options. Here's the interesting thing. So when the vehicles are sold, there's lots of options. Now, if there's options which are um, sold on more than 33% of those vehicles, that has to be included on the tow car, which I think is pretty cool. So it's, it's actually fairly representative apart from the midgets actually driving it of, of what you would um, do in, in real life. 
All right, so let's talk about the actual performance requirements then. What does the vehicle have to do when it's towing the trailer? Well, the first thing is, is well, do it in any order, but um, there's acceleration tests. So for example, naught to 100 kilometers has to be done in 30 seconds um, for the single rear wheel vehicles on a level road, and you've got to do it three times in each direction just to prove it was not a fluke and wind direction, temperature changes, etc. that sort of thing. So it's got to have the power to move the load. Um, you've got to do a launch on grade. So they'll give you a gradient and then the vehicle has to um, pull away five times within a five minute period on a 12% grade, which is equivalent to seven degrees. So that means it can't just be a one-off. Um, sway and handling, this is this is the good one. Now, I'm not gonna go into the, I might do another video on exactly what, what this is about, but basically, um, this test is designed to ensure that the trailer doesn't boss the tow car around and there's sway damping ratios and there's the amount of understeer because if you see my other videos and others I've got coming up you'll note that when you put a tow ball mass on a vehicle you lighten the front axle and when you lighten the front axle of a vehicle you reduce the load on it I you can think of it as weight, but it's really load and the less load you've got on a tire the less grip and then you understeer and end up doesn't end well. So it's good to see that there's some tests involved there. Then there's a braking test. Again, there's multiple braking tests. Here's one, 32 kilometers an hour to zero within 24 meters if the trailer's over 1360. And there's a gradeability test as well, which is a real world climb or equivalent. Now, this is what they use. They use something called Davis Dam, and I made this up in Google Maps. So here's the Davis Dam up there, and they drive up to there now there's a couple of and um test the vehicle so there's a couple of points here that's what it looks like in profile so um, there's also minimum speed you've got to adhere to as you go up and interestingly the minimum temperature has to be 38 degrees um, and the aircon has to be on fully cold with the blower going and as i said there's minimum speeds there so this is actually quite a good real world test can it do it and not blow up so i think i think that's fantastic um, now that's an 18 kilometer to run and it's a 3,000 foot elevation gain um, or 915 meters um, and you're thinking okay well this is great are we going to ship our vehicles all the way out to the US to do this well no you don't have to you can do it um, on dynos and you can also have something called a dyno trailer well when you pull the trailer on something which isn't even flat ground then it creates drag on the trailer by making those wheels harder to turn and that can replicate this particular um, incline. Um, and there's other ways to do it as well, but basically um, it will all be modeled on this, but you don't actually need to go to Davis Hill. Technology has allowed us to do other things. But I did think about what would the Australian equivalent be? And I thought about um, a really tough hill climb for a car, Harrietville to Mount Hotham, and that's actually 32 kilometers, 1280 meters. Um, as was pointed out to me when I did a review of this um, with, with engineers, um, typically the temperature wouldn't be that high, but nevertheless, it's still pretty pretty interesting. But that's not actually part of, of the test. I just think that would be a pretty cool um, te test for Australia. Now, there's a few other points to consider. Um, the J2, the standards do say the stability control and TSC, that's trailer stability control effectiveness, must not be reduced. Now, if you're wondering what trailer stability control is, that's a variant of stability control which helps um, identify and then combat trailer sway. And I have another video where I fully explain what that is. Um, it's noted that durability would be obviously impacted because you know, the, the engine, the car is now doing more work than what was originally, uh, it was designed for. Um, so that's a note as well. Insurance, you're gonna notify that. And there might be an ADR category change because the different design rules for different types of vehicles like trucks and utes and passenger cars, etc., And these modifications might push it from one category to another one, so that's gotta be noted. And as I said, there's plans to roll this framework out to other states as well. All right, so what does that leave us with a summary then um, and, and my opinion about these things? Well, um, I think that the J2807 is a really good standard for, for towing. It's not just a case of, all right, you're just going to um, whack in some harder springs, etc. You've actually got to prove the vehicle can perform. It, it can brake, it can tow, it can manoeuvre, it can control a trailer. So I'm really, really um, pleased to see that. And it also means that this 
certification process is going to be hard and expensive. It's going to be really quite, quite tough. And I think that's a good thing because if we've got vehicles out there towing heavy, we want them to be safe. We don't want just to some backyard mechanic to drop in a few stuff, a um, few components and call it good. Now, interestingly, new vehicles sold in Australia don't need to meet J2807, whereas upgraded ones do. Um, the only standard that um, they've got to meet is uh, ADR6202, and it's pretty simple because all you've got to do is sell the vehicle without a tow hitch or something like that, or tow tongue, and then you know it doesn't actually need to meet those um, that, that J2808 standard. You can claim whatever you want as the as the towing capacity. And um, to my mind, I think Ford actually did that back in the days of the PX Ranger when it first came out with 3350 kilograms, and then the Col Colorado came out 3500, and all of a sudden Ford decided that the Ranger should go to 3500. Um, it didn't really make many changes to the, to the PX as a result. So. The interesting thing is, is that an aftermarket modified vehicle may need to adhere to and prove itself towing wise beyond what a brand new car would in Australia. So that's an interesting little legislatively, I don't know, loophole, whatever else you want to call it. I don't know, I call it interesting. Now, the trailers used in J2807 are very tightly controlled. Um, the specific tyres, weight, weight distribution, all the rest of it doesn't reflect the pretty shocking reality of some of the caravans we've got in Australia, which have got massive sides, hugely lifted suspension, mud tyres, which are awful for sway and handling, and really poor weight distribution. So just because it can handle, let's say, a three-ton trailer under J2807, doesn't mean to say it can handle a three-ton Australian caravan, and I think that's a little bit of a, little bit of a loophole there. Now the question is how much of an upgrade you're actually going to get because let's say you've got a 300 series and you run it through all of this for an increased GCM, how much extra is it going to actually tow and how much will that upgrade actually cost you? Is it going to be cost effective? And only time will tell the answer to that but it could well be people look at this and go you know what I think I'm going to buy Ram 3500 or something like that instead rather than upgrade the existing vehicle, which would be a sensible thing to do, or a light truck like a Canter or, or a Iveco. And yeah, it might be cheaper simply just to buy a larger vehicle, but regardless, I think that this is actually a positive first step towards responsible vehicle modifications because it's got a solid test behind it. And it's actually good to see the states all working together. Yes, it's Queensland's legislation, but all the other states were involved as well. So I hope this video has been useful to you if you're looking at uh, upgrading your vehicle for towing or GVM. If you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments and thank you for watching.